Hello, my name is Cheryl Hernandez and I am the Director of Student Accessibility here at Central Arizona College. Welcome. I wanted to just do a brief video explaining what paperwork is needed and what the next steps are to receive services at Student Accessibility Services. The very first step is to be enrolled in the college and you would do this by going to www.centralaz.edu and you want to go to Admissions and Apply Now. Under the Admissions tab, Student Accessibility Services webpage is also there. And you can, you can find our um, contact information right there for my assistant and for myself to send any documentation. But my email address is Cheryl, C-H-E-R-Y-L, dot Hernandez, H-E-R-N-A-N-D-E-Z, at centralaz.edu. So the first step, you want to apply for the college. The second step is to provide us with documentation of disability. This may include medical documentation from your physician, signed by your physician, a psychological evaluation, um, some other type of evaluation or audiogram. Um, the other, other documents might include an IEP, but if you submit an IEP, it must come with the MET. They must accompany each other. Many of you will say, well, I don't have an MET. They never gave me one. All high schools are required to have an MET, which is called the Multi-Educational Disciplinary Team um, Assessment. They must have that assessment. It's required. Um, and they must have it if they have an IEP. So if you're, you're, you're somebody that had an IEP in high school, I promise you, you have an MET as well. The, the easiest way to obtain that is to simply call the high school and ask them for a copy of the MET and the IEP signed copies, the signature pages as well. Any college any university is going to ask you for this documentation. So if you're a student that is transferring to um, university after this, you're going to need that documentation regardless. So I strongly suggest that you obtain that. So once you receive your documentation, you, you need to email it to us. So the best way to do that is to scan it. Uh, if you don't have a scanner, you can go to Staples or Office Max and they can scan it for you or ask, you know, a, a parent or, or somebody to help scan that information for you. Also, there are scanning apps on cell phones. Taking a picture of something is not the same as a scan. It will blow, blow uh, the image up really large and it will be almost impossible to print it properly. So if you can download a scanning app, they're free on your phone and that will and you can just take pictures of, of each page that's a little cumbersome it might be better to just go and um, have it have it scanned somewhere so once it is scanned and emailed to either myself or to Ricky we will schedule an appointment and we will complete a 504 accommodation plan please note 504 accommodation plans are used in higher education they are not the same as an IEP there are services that are different. For instance, an example might be the ability to turn assignments in late. That's something that we don't do typically in college. So what we will go over the differences and we will talk about what services are allowable and what we can and cannot provide in college. But please note, it is not the same as an IEP. It's different. Um, once we complete your plan, we'll ask you for approval and once you've approved your plan, we can forward it. We will either forward it ourselves to your instructors or you can forward it yourself to your instructor. You'll have that decision to make. And that's how your instructors will receive your accommodations. And we'll go over that at length. If you have questions, you can ask. We'll go over each of the steps. We'll make sure that you understand the process. You can invite anybody you'd like to the meeting. They will be a Teams meeting. It will be recorded. And the reason we do this is so that if you forget anything, you can go back. You'll have a recording to refer to. You can go back and say, oh, what did Cheryl say? I don't remember how that worked. And you can look at your recording. Or you can simply email us, contact us. The best way to get a hold of us is by email. Um, if for some reason you don't want to be recorded, you're... you're, you're 
you're just really not wanting to be recorded, we can work around that. That's okay. We can do a telephone call. Um, we can, in um, special circumstances, do face-to-face -face meetings, but not right now. Later on when um, we're back to face-to-face -to -face -to -face meetings, we can do that. But it is preferable that we do um, video recording over the phone, over the, over the video, because then you'll have that to go back and refer to. So, and also there's no discrepancies about Cheryl said I could do this, but this is, but this is what was actually happening. We'll have it recorded and it'll be there for you to, to review later on. I hope this video helped. I do want to also add that temporary accommodations are also available if there's an illness, an injury that is going to, um, prevent you from attending your class more than one day. So if you're gonna be more than one day absent, whether it's COVID-19 or you have the flu or you've broken um, your leg, we can assist you with that. And we can try to make sure that you are retained in that class, that you can maybe uh, work with your instructor on some, some dates to try to help you out a little bit, but we will need documentation. So just, when in doubt, just get a hold of our department and we'll see what we can do to help you. And um, I hope this, again, I hope this information was helpful to you and welcome to Student Accessibility Services.